Hello, everyone. My name is Walia Eaglehawk, and I'm the BTS theorist. I'm a sociologist, a social theorist, a full-time army, and the author of Idol Limerence, The Art of Loving BTS as Phenomena. I make books all about BTS and ARMY, and now I'm making podcasts too. On The BTS Theorist, I want to bring to you stories from within the fandom and new perspectives on BTS and ARMY. Think of this as a place where I share ideas, experiences, and observations all about those seven men we love so much and the fandom that journeys next to them. Plus, I'll bring in people to interview from time to time just to keep it fresh. If you're an ARMY, it's so good to have you here. If you're a curious onlooker, hi. I hope you find this episode informative and that you walk away with a better understanding of just what makes BTS and ARMY so good. On today's episode, I am fortunate enough to be interviewing an essayist from my latest book project, I Am ARMY, We Don't Need Permission. This book features a collection of essays from ARMY from around the world that share their stories of how they found BTS and who exactly they are. So today I am joined by Bianca Cuatico, who is a language assistant based in Madrid, Spain. She originally came from the Philippines where she grew up and lived her entire life before moving abroad. She is passionate about animal welfare and wildlife conservation, and of course, she is an army. Her essay, Exiting the Maze to Find a Spring Day, shares how she found BTS and how they changed her life. Hello, Bianca. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> is it Sunday over there? Is it the, or is it Monday? No, it's Monday at it's lunchtime. Monday. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Happy Monday. Yeah, yeah. What a great I way to start your week. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. You're not, you're not as far behind as America. I've got to keep that in mind. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> firstly, um, can you tell me how you first found BTS and became an army? Spare no detail. What was the moment? What was the day? What were you doing? What did it look like? Go. Okay. I can't remember the exact date, but I'm pretty sure it was in 2017. I just had arrived home from work because I distinctly remember it was when I was still working in the second last company I was with. And I just needed something to distract me because I wasn't I wasn't in the right place mentally and emotionally at that time. So when I was on YouTube, for some reason, they showed like the Steve Aoki remix of Mic Drop. And I've never watched a BTS video before. And for some reason, this video comes up on my feed. And I wasn't sure what it was exactly that made me decide to click on it. But when I did, I was blown away. I, I've seen K-pop videos before, but never have I been so attached or intrigued after seeing one so when i first watched it was just like the video i really want to appreciate the video and then the second that's when i watched with the subtitles of the lyrics so i found it very interesting that you could tell it was like a diss song but it was different from the usual diss songs i would hear from the west where they would be up front dropping you know, crude words. <laughs> but for them, they made it into a play of words. They made a lot of hinting involved. So I was really intrigued about that. And, you know, once you start being intrigued, you start learning about their names. And you start learning more things about them. And I wanted to see more. So when I started to search more content about BTS, what came up was Spring Day, the music video. And it was actually that music video that made me into an army because when I first watched the video, same thing, no lyrics, no subtitles, I mean, but just appreciation of the video itself. But it was the first time I felt that I could understand the emotions that the artists wanted to express through their song and the music video especially since the song itself was not in English. So that was something that I found even more amazing. And when I was searching for the, uh, the meaning of the song, you know, there are a lot of theories. The most popular one would be the one for the Sewell Ferry tragedy. But before learning about that, I had a different take on uh, the lyrics. 
of the song. Uh, I also include that in my essay, actually. All right. Well, tell us more. I think there's an excerpt that we decided you're going to read out. Um, it's the second excerpt, which covers this exact moment when you start, you know, finding out more about what spring day lyrics mean. Um, did you want to read yeah. that out for us right now, just so we can learn a little bit more? Sure. So the second excerpt, it's after watching the Mike Drop Steve Aoki remix music video, I wanted to see more content by these seven men. I decided to see what other music videos they had, and the first one that came out on my YouTube was a music video called Spring Day. The title made me curious about how this could relate to the thumbnail of a guy seeming to look up at something. On the first watch, I didn't turn on the English captions. I, was, I wanted to appreciate the visuals of the video, and I was not disappointed. I was captivated by the cinematography of the whole video. Every scene was picture perfect. Every color scheme looked like a filter on Instagram. Even though I did not understand what they were saying, it was amazing how I could still hear and feel the emotion they wanted to express. On the second viewing, I turned the caption on as I wanted to see what the lyrics said. The first line, I miss you, saying this makes me miss you even more. For some reason, that one simple line resonated with me. It was at that moment I had the sudden realization that I didn't even notice how I had changed in a way that I had lost self-confidence compared to who I used to be. I was missing that part of me. You could say that I was hooked lyrically from the first line as I felt so much truth in it. There was one line in particular in the song that struck me the most and has been ingrained in me since I first read them. This one line changed everything for me was, the morning will come again. No darkness, no season can last forever. Upon reading that line, I felt immense sense of relief and comfort. Like I was being told, whatever problems and concerns I'm facing right now, it will surely pass. It felt like a promise and that there was hope. Oh, that's beautiful. So in your essay, you talk about where you're at, you know, when you find this music video and what's going on in your life. So I was wondering if we could talk now a little bit about how you said you were a quote unquote good girl and that you were following the path that your parents yeah. set out for you. So what was that like and what was the impact on your life and your well-being and your mental health from being this good girl and following this path? Okay. Uh, I mentioned also like growing up, a lot of things were decided for me and I understood it was for my best interest. I understood that my parents didn't want me to have a hard time later on in life. And this was one of their ways of protecting me. So I just pretty much went with the flow back then because I knew that they really loved me. They cared for me. It's just one way they're ensuring that I will have a good life in the future. and But I'm the type of person that I will endure withstand something until I'm at the breaking point. And that's when I pretty much explode. But I didn't explode with regards to my parents. It was more of um, when I was already in the, the 2017 part, that's when I felt like the breaking point already. But prior to that, I didn't really notice how I was feeling. It was only later, I think, when I graduated from school. In school, when I was still in, let's say, high school, college, the course I would take would be what was recommended to me by my, my parents. The electives I would take was aligned to that course that they wanted me to take. But they permitted me to do things outside, for example, my school or university organizations. So when I think about my academic years, all my best memories will be related to my organizations. So pretty much those were the best memories I had like growing up. But in terms of like being the good girl, it's more of I knew they had the best interest for me and I just wanted to be able to live up to that. But along the way, since I just kept on going with the flow, it made you start to think, is this really what I want or is what they want for me? So 
the more you just go with the flow, the more you start to doubt what it means to be yourself. And that's what I discovered during that time. Oh, how interesting. So then when you came across the Spring Day music video, that that made you start to think about where you're at in your life and you're not quite sure of your path. Um, what else did kind of becoming an army inspire in you in that moment? Like, did it, was it an instant thing where you were like, I'm going to change my career or I'm going to do this or that? Or was it a slower evolving kind of process where you learned more and more about yourself? I think it was more of a slower thing for me because at that point I was just pretty much interested and interesting in the topic of BTS and then starting to learn about ARMY. And then it was also the time I started to think about how I had changed from the self-confident me to me being lost. So at that time, I was just really starting to question a lot of things. And I think it was down the line, I guess, one to two years later that I decided to, you know, really take action or be more conscious of what to do to be able to answer the question of who I was. So what did that look like when you started taking action? Did you do things um, like as an army? Did you do things within um, the army community or your own community in the Philippines? What did that look like? What did you do for yourself? How did you kind of start to turn things around? Okay. One thing I guess would be I was trying to be more accepting of myself and that, you know, the journey of self-love also is not an instantaneous thing. And learning about yourself is not like a eureka moment that uh, right now I know who I am, what I want. It's not always going to be like that. In my case, it's not. So it's just more of a journey of self-discovery for me. In terms of how how I learned that and what I did, I wanted to be more involved in the community as well of ARMY. And with regards to that, I joined a lot of like charity activities. I may not be the one who organizes, but I do my part in terms of contributing or spreading the word. And what kind of charities were you part of and what kind of events did you do? And I guess when you're a part of ARMY, there's a lot going on. So how did you make these choices? Like where did you naturally gravitate? Uh, I split it, I guess you can see it in two parts. One would be with regards to people. And then the other part would be with regards to animals. So I tried to as much as possible to donate both ways. One example would be when Typhoon, Typh- sorry, Typhoon Ulysses, or in the international community, it's VAMCO, hit the Philippines. It was a Category 4 typhoon, and it brought the largest amount of floods in our country since 2009. So when that happened, there was around 180,000 people from my country who had to be evacuated. There were 40,000 homes that were submerged. And at that time, we were still working from home. It was the height of the pandemic. And seeing my countrymen having such a hard time was quite difficult for me. Uh, Also, at that time, we couldn't really go out. You know, we're, we're stuck at home. We weren't advised to be able to go out. And I did as much as I could because I saw that there were a lot of army fan bases in the Philippines who also wanted to do something. So they were able to, I guess they were able to talk among themselves. They wanted to help. So they would announce on their Twitter's accounts that they would be collecting donations and they would be giving it to the community. So to be able to, I guess, entice more people, they partnered up with local shops. They would be raffling off official and unofficial merchandise as a bonus for people who wanted to help. And I was extremely proud of that. And I was able to contribute uh, monetarily to that one. But I was also able to encourage my family to be able to donate clothes to our local 
collection drive in our subdivision so we can also donate to the people who are in need. And another one, I guess, during the pandemic, a lot of things happened during the pandemic. So there was a senior home that also took care of orphan children who asked for help. Because I believe at that time, some of their senior citizens, as well as their staff, contracted the virus for COVID and they were not allowed to leave. So they could not get food or necessities required. And my thought back then was that one of my grandmothers is in a senior home. What if she was in that situation? They could not get food. They needed medicine. So what I did was I contacted the one of the persons in charge. And I was able also to get a list of the things they need in terms of the food, the toiletries, and other necessities. And I ordered stuff online for an online grocery and had it delivered straight to them so that at least they would be able to have things to eat. Because from what I heard at that point, they were already running out of food and they were having such a hard time already. Wow. Okay. So you and charity work are fast friends. You have found this calling in life to help other people, especially throughout the pandemic, of course, um, to go through a pandemic and then to also get hit by a typhoon. Like that's incredibly unfortunate. Um, So why do you think people are so inspired? Like Ami is so inspired to help other people out, especially in terms of charity work. Um, What is it about BTS that makes people want to help out? I think part of it is that they never forgot where they came from, like where they started out. And they've always been very humble about it, about where they are now. So I guess like ARMY also want to embody that. If the people that they admire are so humble, then they also don't feel like they should really boast a lot of things. And I remember RM saying at one point in an interview when he was asked what keeps them grounded. And he he mentions that in a trophy, let's say the members of BTS are just like 5%. ARMY is 50%. The rest is going to be like the company. So remembering that you're just one small percent will keep you grounded and humble. So I think that's one thing as well. And the fans seeing that they do try to give back to the community, they do it in a very private way, but somehow media still finds out about it. It really inspires them to also give back to the community because they feel like BTS has given so much to them personally, and they're giving back to the community that they also want to reciprocate and give back. That is so beautiful. And I totally agree. I think it's, um, I think BTS inspire people to do good in the name of BTS and the name of ARMY as well, just so we can share all this love that we have um, and all these wonderful opportunities that we can create by coming together Um, because we are one small percent of a greater whole, but also when we work together as a team, as ARMY, we can raise a lot of money and we can do a lot of good in the world. And I think that's really awesome. Totally. Yeah, yeah, which is so cool. And we saw that a lot throughout the pandemic, didn't we? Um, so from that, can you tell everyone the story of what happened at your workplace when you were given the opportunity <laughs> to, <laughs> to get a salary increase by talking about a personal project or a personal passion? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So at that time there was a there was a unique salary increase increase system that we had. So usually for companies it would just be your performance and work. But for us at that time it was like they had three Ps. So it was your your passion, purpose and your performance. So performance would be your work performance, your passion would be what are you passionate about that helps you develop into being a better version of you? And then purpose is what purpose do you have and that gives back to society? 
So in terms of the passion, I thought about putting being an army as my passion and how it helped me to be a better version of myself is more of the self-accepting of part of me as well. So being able to accept more of me, learn more about myself, and then how it's also helped me to be a better workmate or a friend in the workplace. So reaching out, lending a helping hand to others in need, and then turning it to my purpose of giving back to society. I was I related to how BTS had their Love Yourself, the Love Myself campaign with United Nations. So your UNICEF. So what I did was I presented that as my purpose, giving back to the community through charity, through animal organizations, to people. And at that time, I what I presented as the highlight of my purpose was I remember there was a post by one of our local news communities. They posted that there was a an old man, a senior citizen, who lost his job during the pandemic and thus lost his home. And he was living in like in a jeepney, which is like a public transportation in the Philippines. He had no food, no medicine. And then the the kind people who owned that like the jeepney had them live there for now. So I felt really inclined to help this person. So I reached out to another workmate of mine and we both of us, we rallied uh, donations from different people, from the company, our friends, our family. And then we contacted the local uh, news outlet if they could help us get in touch with this old man. And they were kind enough to help us. They were the ones who uh, collected our money. They used half the money to buy food, medicine, whatnot for the old man. And then they gave the rest of the money to him as well. And what they did just to show that they really gave the money, they took videos, they took the photos to send to us as proof of that they really gave the money that everyone had collected for the old man. Wow. Okay. So this is what you then told your company about in this presentation. And did you think that, Yeah. like, how did you think they were going to respond? Did you think you had a good chance of getting this? And also is this um, salary increase something that they give out to a lot of people or not many people? What, what were the chances of you getting this? Okay. I wasn't expecting a lot actually. So I guess I was expecting just a bit above like the 50% mark. That was my expectation. And I was expecting like a lot of questioning to be done. So that was what I was nervous about because I wasn't sure if I was doing justice in really portraying how BTS and ARMY changed my life and why I'm so passionate about them. So I was really worried about that. So after I did the presentation, they had me leave the video conference for like five minutes. It was a video presentation. And then they called, oh, sorry. They called me back. And then they told me that they gave me like the 100% mark for the salary increase. And I was holding it together. I was trying my best not to cry because I was in shock. I was really expecting that. And I was told later on that the presentation was well-received. They didn't have any further questions anymore. And that giving the 100% mark is rare because there's only a limited number they can give per year. So being able to get that mark was really such a big moment for me, actually. That's pretty cool that your company recognize the impact of BTS and ARMY and that you were able to communicate that as well. Like, I don't think many people professionally um, get the respect from where they're working, especially in regards to being a fan. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. That's so cool. So what would you say um, has been BTS's biggest impact on your life? Like how have you changed since finding them? I guess I would say, Self-love and self-acceptance is 
or one of or actually two of the biggest things in relation to that i guess from there i started to not pay attention so much on what other people would think and say about me because it's my life and from there i need to be able to live it for me not for them it took me like how many years to be able to start this journey of self-love it was because of these seven men so that i guess that would be the biggest impact for me really learning about myself being more accepting of myself because when i first told some friends about it that i'm starting to learn to love myself and they would say but you already love yourself. You, we all love ourselves, but they don't really understand exactly what it means if you felt that lost and then you had that moment of questioning already. Is it for you that you want to do this or is it because it's expected of you? So it was at that moment I had that awakening. And from there, I started to really be more conscious of the decisions I make. Is it what I want? Is it something that me personally, is this what I want? Or is it, I know this is what people are expecting of me. That's why I want to do it. So being more conscious of that would be, I guess, the biggest impact. How beautiful. Um, all right. So since writing your essay for I Am Army, what has changed? Has anything changed for you? What does life look like now? What has your journey looked like since then? I guess the biggest change would be that I moved to Spain. <laughs> that would be the biggest. So I taking that leap of faith, moving from a different continent, and then having to be separated from your immediate family, from your friends, having to learn a different culture and, of course, a different language. Those are big things. But how my life looks now, I could say it's a lot calmer compared to before I wrote the essay. It's a lot calmer. I'm able to appreciate more the small things. For example, going on walks to the park, just walking around the city, going to grab a cup of coffee, enjoying the sunset. So small things, I'm being able to enjoy them more now. And I believe like writing the essay was very therapeutic for me during the pandemic because at that time I was really at the height of like really stressed out and having that to having that essay was I guess a relief for me it was like going back throughout my journey as an army from when I started to where I am now and how impacted I was so I guess that helped me so much and it helped me to you know take that leap of faith as well Wow, that's a big deal, moving from the Philippines to Spain. Um, big scenery change, yeah. going to Europe. Um, what is, like, do you like it in Spain? What is the vibe like over there? Because I know that, um, especially during the pandemic, Spain was hit really hard. So it's an interesting, I guess, choice. Yeah. What made you What made you want to move there? Okay, I, I visited Spain 2014. It was like a, a graduation gift for me for the trip. And I really enjoyed it. And I would say later on that I've always wanted to return to Spain, but I, you know, I didn't have like the solid plan of how to get back. And then when I started working, I would just say offhandedly, I would, I wanted to come back, but you know, it was just like, eh, just an idea, no solid plans whatsoever. And then during the pandemic, I really wanted to push to go to come already but then my godfather who lives here he said it's not a good time yet to move here because of the pandemic people are locked inside their houses if you come here you'll just stay indoors so not yet it's not a good idea so i waited a couple more years and then i saw the applications for the program were open again for the year 2022 so I decided to give it a shot to see if, you know, if I could make it or not. Because 
after thinking about it for so long, and I decided that while I'm still young, I wanted to have that opportunity to, you know, move and live overseas, try working overseas. And I didn't want to have that regret later on. I didn't even try. So I tried the, the program. I got accepted, then got placed in Madrid and, you know, moved here to work. So here I am. And in terms of the vibe of the place, I would say it's completely different. And I guess my godfather said it best that in Spain, people work to live. It's not they live to work. So that was, I think, a big difference from where I came from. Um, in my country, the Philippines, people are very hardworking. People are very hardworking, but also the, com the competition is very high. So a lot of times people really grind. And I was like that too. So when I moved to Spain and I saw how people were pretty much relaxed, it was so different for me. It took a while for me to get used to. And there would be times when mentally I would be looking for like the stress and the challenge because that's what I was so used to for how many years. And when I got here, I just had to learn to relax and adjust to the vibe of the country. Wow, that's so interesting because you start your essay talking about how you're in that corporate life, how you're, you know, on the grind, doing the hustle in the Philippines. Um, and now since, you know, going on that journey of self-love and self-discovery, this is this is where you've ended up so far, of course. The journey's never over. But yeah. the fact that you, you know, you went abroad, you took that leap. I think that's really awesome. So I just want to say good job like that is so cool and that is a great way <laughs> for us to start i know i don't even mean that I'm, i hope that came across right because like that that is really big you know because i read your essay and i know where you were at then so to make this um this move is really awesome and it's so inspiring so i think everyone reading your essay will and also who have now listened to this to know that you're living in madrid um yeah they're gonna get really inspired so thank you um i've got one more question <laughs> for you well, one question with three questions. Um, you got to answer quickly. Okay. What What is your favorite BTS okay. era music video and song? Go. Favorite era would be the Love Yourself era, and then the uh, favorite music video would be Spring Day. Favorite song, answer Love Myself. Like wow. it's the song. These are the like, the albums and the songs I listen to if I want to stay calm. <laughs> Yeah. Beautiful. All right. They are solid choices. And I reckon so far out of everyone, you've answered the fastest. So you, yeah. So you're number one so <laughs> far for the, for the fastest. We'll, we'll see, we'll see how the other essays go, but first place to Bianca. Um, <laughs> and now, you know, um, so Bianca, thank you so much for joining me today and my tonight, your today, my tonight, um, everyone, you can find Bianca on Instagram. <laughs> at Bianca Quatico. So it's C-U-A-T-I-C-O, um, all one word. And you can find me at the BTS Theorist on Instagram, as well as Willie A. Eaglehawk. Oh, got to say my own name right. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'll put all of our handles in the description boxes beneath wherever you're listening to or watching this. You can pick up a copy of I Am Army, We Don't Need Permission, which actually comes out today. It's out in the world. Watch out, everyone. Um, you can pick up a copy from revoltbooks.com. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Book Depository, or by ordering through your local indie retailer. So that concludes our session. Thank you so much, Bianca. Um, and everyone else, I will see you next time. Bye.